transformation of functions. Describe how the graph of y equals to 2f 3x minus 6 plus 2 can be produced from the graph of y equals to f of x. So to answer this question, it's a good idea to rewrite the transformed function. So I'll write transform function as y equals to 2 times f of so I'll factor 3 out. It's kind of important to do so. We get x minus 2 plus 2, right? So that is a better way to write the equation before getting into describing how to produce a graph or the transformed function, right? So now, as you can see, what do we have? Starting with this 2, that is this 2 gives us vertical stretch by a factor of 2, right? So let me write down vertical stretch by a factor of 2, correct? Right? That is my first thing. So let's move from left to right. If you move from left to right, order is maintained. Now this factor inside, inside terms are all pertaining to horizontal things, right? So 3 here gives you horizontal compression. By a factor of how much? 1 over 3, right? It has to be reversed. So that is a common mistake sometimes students do. It is 3 is not a stretch, it's a compression. x minus 2 really means horizontal translation of 2 units. Which direction? Left or right? It is right, correct? How do we get that? Basically, you need to equate that to 0, right? You could do that with 3x minus 6 also. Let me just show you here. If you equate 3x minus 6 equals to 0, what do you get? You get x equals to plus 2, right? So that is 2 units to the right. So I hope you understand how to get it from any general equation, right? Now, Let's talk about one more thing, which is the number 2 here. This relates to vertical translation. Of 2 units up. So that is how you can describe the transformation. Now the question is, describe how this graph can be produced from y equals to f of x. Now, to produce this graph, you could follow two methods. I will prefer two methods, right? First is, you could do, let me use a different thing. So let me divide this into two methods. So first method I will say is, let's go as such, which is step number one. Let's say this is our step number one. This is one, two, three, and four. Let's say these are the four transformations, right? So first, we can do step number one, right? And then we do step number two, and then we do step number three, and then we do step number four. This is first method. Now, when I say these steps, step number one, two, three, and four, it basically means you could do vertical stretch by a factor of two, then horizontally compress by a factor of one third, and then translate two units right and two units up. The other way could be, first you do step number two, that is horizontal compression. So you could do step number two. Once you do compression, then you do vertical stretch, and then you do step number one, which is vertical stretch, and then you could do three and four, right? So three and four. Now, this is another way of doing it. Now, it is kind of important to note that these two steps we mixed and matched, but they should be done first, right? So they are always the first steps to be done, right? And then later we should do the other two steps, that is these. 
these I'll call set to right for any transformation you could change these orders also right what I'm trying to say is that you could do step number two step number one that is horizontally compressed by a factor of one-third vertical stretch by a factor of two and then you could translate up first and then to the right so that will also work right what I'm trying to say is you could mix and match so you could do here one two and four and three right four and three so these are all possible steps which can be done and all are correct okay all are correct but if you do translations before stretches then you're making a huge mistake so don't do that always do multiplications which relate to reflections stretches and compressions first and then translation so that's the key to understand in this particular question i hope that makes things absolutely clear and you appreciate it thank you